first thing you need to do is get yourself a decent sized log. And before you do anything, sharpen your blade and just uh, compare that horizontal blade to that skid. Before you open up the log, check the horizontal blade compared to the horizontal skid right here. So basically, you're checking the, uh, j j just how parallel that blade is currently sitting against your skid face here. Right there versus there. And you just check that visually. So you want to make sure, just by eye, that there is, in fact, an actual tilt to that blade. If you need to make a quick adjustment before you get into that log, what you need to adjust is that little stopper bolt and that cone, right? So to give yourself more tilt, you need to bring that nut towards the beam and that cone towards the beam. As you can see, that determines where your swing stops. So to give yourself more tilt, push the bolt stopper here and the cone in further. Because you've just assembled it and it's a new machine, you don't know how well that blade's adjusted yet. So what you want to do is you want to get into that top face of the log. Make small little incremental cuts like two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch until you cut away the top slab. Don't worry that the blade isn't intersecting or the timber's not being able to come off, whatever. Just raise and lower and just whittle your way through until you reveal a flat surface on the top of your log. So that's step one. So we've just opened up the log face here, um, and again, yours might be a little bit messier. You might have lines drawn in the top face there, or your timber might not come off, so you'll have to raise it up and, and cut them all free until you get to a position where you've opened the face here. So now, I'll lower it uh, an eighth of an inch or half the width of the kerf. So I'll lower it down, and then I'll send it through in one clean skim, very light skim, very slow, and I'm watching to see if the front of the blade here and the back of the blade here is cutting equally. So that's what this whole crisscross thing is about. You want to see front score marks and you want to see back score marks. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just needs to show here and there. So I'll lower it and I'll skim through very slowly. I'll watch the blade as it's going through and uh, then I'll show you the adjustment to make there. Right, so we've done our skim test and I've confirmed that uh, we're getting crisscross. It's got a slight lean forward here, so we get a little predominant forward marks here, but we're pretty close. So that's what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to achieve crisscross, a smooth surface. The last thing you want is this thing riding up and then dropping down at the end and then plowing into, this, uh, into the log as it comes back. So it should go out clean, come back clean. Right, so you've got two big um, bolts here. They look like 5.8, they're, they're M16. So you need to crack them open with uh, two ring spanners. So to crack them open, you'll have to swing between horizontal and vertical to get your ring spanner in here. So what I do is I use the open ring spanner at this side, and I use the closed ring spanner end on the inside. All right, so just crack them open, and then crack the fire one open there. Then you have these two adjusters here. Uh, they look like 3.8, 
they're M10. So, so basically if you need the front of the blade to go down, you need to uh, raise these nuts up, leaving a, a couple of mil gap there. Get a hammer, a rubber hammer, gently tap it down and you can use your finger to tighten the bottom nut. So you're trying to lower that down. So the whole blade and the pulley will go down if you need the front of the blade down. Um, vice versa if you need to go up. Now this adjustment is very fine. So all you're talking about is a millimeter movement at a, at a time. So you can just judge by the, the, the gap. Ba basically half the width of a washer each movement. A very fine adjustment. And then, and then you lock these big nuts back up. So you go down and skim again, come back until you're relatively satisfied that that blade is running true, front and back. So, so what I can do right now is I can uh, physically push the machine onto the slab and check that uh, on the slab face. So I've, uh, it's, it's best to actually push it on um, when the machine's switched off, then it won't score up your slab. But right here, so I can roll that tooth over to the front here. I can look at the gap, and at the moment, it's scraping at the front. So if we roll the tooth back here, we've got uh, quite a gap here. It's about, it's about two mil. So, so at the moment, the blade is diving down. So what we want to do is raise that pulley and that adjuster up about a, mil, a millimeter because a mil there will bring that down a mil and this up a mil. So, so we're, we're too low at the front, so I'll need to raise that up just a fraction at the front. So we'll crack this open, so I'll swing that up a bit there. So we use the open at this end and the ring at this end. All right, so we loosen that one up, swing it back, and we'll loosen this one up. And use the ring spanner. All right, so both are loose now. Now we're gonna wanna go we want to lower the front of the blade, uh, no, raise the front of the blade up because the back had the gap, the front was scraping. And you can see on the slab the front score marks. So we take a 17 and a 16 and we're going to want to go, we're going to want to bring that up. So we've got to loosen up the bottom nuts. So we'll loosen that up. Oop. Like that, one, two, so about a, about a millimeter. So just until that nut goes loose, right there, and then we'll get the one at the back, right there. Oh, out of the way. There you go, right there, and then we'll tighten the top nuts, like that. Okay, one. Two. Right, so that's done. Now I'll lock up, lock up these big nuts again. Nice and tight. Swing it over and lock that one up. I think that's going to be pretty good. So we'll double check that blade on the log and see how we go. So we've just done a skim 
it's very smooth and we are getting crisscross front and back so uh, it's always important especially with these bigger uh, bigger blades like the 12 inch to always skim down and skim back again empty so it has a good chance to skim the actual face if you don't go down and return during your skimming uh, it's likely the blade's going to just, you know, uh, veer up a little bit and not give you a true adjustment. So I'll roll that blade back onto the log and we'll double check that tooth. So I'm just rolling this tooth again to the front and we are about a mil and a half from the tooth to the slab, which is what you'd expect because this side is lower than the back side currently. So about a mil and a half there and then if we move that tooth over there, we're about a mil and a half gap over there. So now you know that that adjustment one, crisscross, horizontal crisscross, is true. So that's done, done deal. Next, we'll take it out of the cut and we'll go down another eighth of an inch uh, skim. And this time, we're checking for the tilt. So you want this side of the blade lower than the back side. So we'll lower it down eighth of an inch, say, you know, three millimeters and we'll skim two inch, and we'll go back again, move across another two inch, go down, go back again, and what we're checking for is a little tiny scribe line between those two cuts. I use the two inch as the gauge for, for, for what I require. Obviously, if you go a two inch and then do another six inch or a 12 inch, that, that, that line is gonna be massive. But predominantly in horizontal cuts, you're doing smaller cuts, so I like to gauge it off two inches of movement. So uh, if that transition line between the two is too heavy, you've got too much lean. If it's not visible, uh, you haven't got enough lean. Now that's terrible. Uh, to, to have a negative lean like that, it means that the blade's gonna grind up against his face every time you move across, heating up the blade, cutting wonky timber, uh, all sorts of variables, you know? Uh, so you've gotta have a good tilt or at least flat. But uh, I, I like to have a little line between two inch skims. So we'll take it back, lower it down an eighth of an inch, skim, go back, skim, go back, and we'll check the difference. Yeah. So we send it down and bring it back and then move over another two inch and between those two cuts you'll see that line. So go out of the cut, bring it back into the gut slowly. So you're making sure that you've skimmed it front and back. Right, now we go over. Two inches. Yeah. Two inches. Send it down. Come back. skim that whole face of the log and you can see these tiny little lines between transitions. So that's a well adjusted blade right now. So we've got these tiny little lines all the way across. Now you'll have to, you'll, you know, with a 12 inch it's best to have a little bit uh, stronger lead like that. But say with a 10 inch, 6 inch and 8 inch, uh, you can get a little bit less. Again to adjust that, basically it's that little stopper bolt right here underneath the motor. Wind that in. Um, to give you more lead, wind it out to give you less lead. So that stops where that pivots. So more that way will give you more lead at the cutting side. Bringing it out will give you less. Obviously you have to adjust the cone to suit so it's nicely tucked in there. Now, you can take that nut out and you can put washers under there or even take all the washers out, you know, to get as much uh, adjustment as you need. But if you find you run out 
there is another way to adjust that and that's just by tilting this beam. The whole beam can be uh, tilted to give you more adjustment at that region. It's an easy case of just swapping the top washers on the side of these rollers from one side to the other and that'll actually rotate the whole beam. So you know you can get it as close as you can at the carriage and if you need more you can basically do that with all the top rollers just by swapping those washers. If you need more adjustment you can also do the bottom ones here. You've also got some adjustment here. You can put washers underneath these little uh, sliders which will actually tilt the whole frame. So there's quite a few uh, ways you can adjust the sawmill to get more adjustment. This machine has a center leg, so before you do that roller adjustment, you'll need to loosen off these four bolts here so that it can relax the, the beam. And then you can put shims in there to accommodate whatever you need to rotate the beam at a, at, at a particular angle. So now we're on to number three, right? So, so uh, I'm gonna lower the saw and I'm gonna do a shallow cut, vertical cut, and then I'm gonna go down deeper and deeper until I can get a full vertical side face of the log. And uh, basically I'll, I'll skim it back and forth so it's nice and smooth, so I know it's, it's, it's perfectly flat. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll turn this off and push it up against that side face so I can actually visually look to see how the, 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 the teeth are comparative to the side face of the log. You don't want to go too deep because you might burn your blade. Um, so you can't do deep cuts until you get that, that vertical blade tracking true. So you always start with shallow cuts, um, make sure that's right, and then go down and do your deep final depth cut. So it's not fully adjusted until you can do a, a maximum uh, vertical cut. So we've done a, a five inch cut there, and I'm gonna lower it down another seven inches to give me a full 12 inch depth cut. Um, I might take some boards on the side before I get to that full face. So then I can measure, you know, or just, just visually look how close the tooth is on this side versus the other side. So we've lowered down, we've done it in two sections just to take the strain away from that deep cut. Um, obviously you see a, a line here, I just uh, you know went too far and I backed off, let's so ignore that. But so what I'll do now is make sure that the surface is super flat. So I'll drive forward very slowly, skim it, drive back very slowly. In hardwoods you might have to do that a few times to make sure that that is 100% flat. And then we basically push the carriage so the blade is sitting right here. And then we check the tooth to the very top edge face here. And we check the tooth the other side. And you want to make sure that that is absolutely equal by eye. So what I'll do is I'll just skim it a few times make sure that's flat. And then we'll check it out. Okay, so we've pushed the saw back on to the, the cut, and I'm gonna rotate this tooth all the way up to the highest point on this side, and I can check. It shows about a millimeter gap there, and we roll the tooth this side, and about half a millimeter gap there too. So 
it's it's not bad you know if I was a perfectionist I'd, I'd bring it over that way a little bit so it's bang on but we're getting crisscross it's cutting efficiently so we're we're pretty well aligned okay to make that adjustment you need to crack open that big nut there looks like a 5.8 but it's a an M16 and basically using this pusher here you can push it to the uh, closer to the beam which will affect the, the the blade that way or you could pull it that way so so you could use that little uh the little uh, adjuster here to push and pull the axes there so you want that gap to be the same at both ends it's pretty pretty close as is but if i needed to change it i'd loosen that and i'd jack it left to right and what i do as a, as a matter of habit is i put my finger here and as i move it i can feel micro movements with my finger so we're only again talking half a millimeter millimeter movements to get that right so we're, we're pretty good i'm going to put some uh some water on the machine because we're cutting so deep but we'll make a 12 inch cut our, our next go and and there's a couple of things that uh you should look for and that is if you've got your blade adjusted true you should see a little square here where the two cuts intersect and that little square should look the same from one end to the other if the little square is wide here it means the blade is is, is tracking that way right so in effect uh, you're going to end up having a, um, a thick board at the operator end the far end will always be true because that's the entry point but the near end is where it exits so so if it goes zing or twang as it comes out it means the blade's not uh, cutting true you want it to come out clean and you want to drive it right back into the log without spraying sawdust and what i look for one is is your board the same width from one end to the other if it is great also you can check that little square from one end to the other if it's uniform that's great so uh that's the third adjustment that's the uh, vertical crisscross um, then we'll move on to the final adjustment which is the intersect was the easiest and we'll get to that shortly but we'll just do a couple of cuts uh, vertically to make sure that we're all good there and then we'll move on to that final adjustment Okay, so that cut the 12 inch uh, pretty easy. I did lower it a little bit earlier when I did my double drop. That's what that's uh, about. So it was a little bit beyond its 12 inch depth capacity. So I raised it back up to 12 inches. So yeah, that, that ate it really well. And as you can see, there's no like zing here. It comes out nice and clean. My little square is uniform from one end to the other. My timber looks good. So that's that's the, the third adjustment, your, your vertical crisscross so again you're looking for the crisscross here so it's cutting you know equally on this side of the tooth as well as that side of the tooth there so now the final adjustment this is the easiest the one that you leave for last and uh, probably the, the one that you get most concerned about and that is when you cut a board and the board doesn't come off and you have to rip it off with a with a wedge or a crowbar or whatever it's such a simple adjustment um, so, so you've either got that happening or 
you got all these vertical lines in your top sla slab face. So the blade's cutting too deep. It's either cutting too high or it's cutting too deep. So, uh, and, and really, on any of these swing blades, that's the easiest, most simple adjustment possible. Uh, basically, where the two blade uh, meets here, uh, or you know, the single blade meets, you have a threshold of about seven millimeters where they have to overlap. Uh, if it's not quite right, if it's too far down, it'll cut in, uh, grooves in the slab. If it's too high, the timber won't come off. So, so literally, that's just adjusting uh, the bottom cone. So, so to affect that adjustment, it's basically this, right? So, so if it's too far down, it's drawing lines, the blade's like this, exaggerated. If it's not quite cutting through, the blade's sitting too high, right? So um, basically, you, you want to lower that blade. So, so put your tooth all the way down and push it over the log again where the cut is, and you should have a gap from the, the, the bottom of the tooth to the slab face of about three millimeters. That's one way to do it. The other way is just simply raise it up a little bit, you know, bring that up, bring that up equally, a couple of mil, which will mean it'll bring the, it'll bring the two cuts together. So, uh, you know, I usually just cut a board and go, oh yeah, it needs to go down three mil, there you go, that's where it goes. It needs to go up three mil, that's it. So really the um, adjustment for is super easy, and that's the, the final piece to the puzzle. And, and you'll also note when, you, when you're doing shallow vertical cuts, you know, a little bit of spring tension in the, in the cut um, won't pull down as much as a 12 inch, right? So in the 12 inch, it's pulling down a little bit. So, so I've only got like a couple of mil there, but you know what? I'm happy because it's not drawing lines. If it's drawing lines, then I've, you know, the blade's too far down. I need to bring it up a bit. So uh, yeah, there's a couple of things to consider there. So, so, you know, in, sh in shallow cuts, you should have about a three by three square from one end to the other. Obviously, that square gets cut away every time you do a board. So, uh, that's just an indication of how those two, two cuts meet. So, there's one final element, and that is, earlier I mentioned you can adjust your rollers here to actuate tilt of your, your beam to get more adjustment for the lead. Well, you can also adjust one end independent to the other if you find that your lead in um, the line transitions from one end to the other. Usually that could be a little bit rough, but if you were pedantic about it and you wanted that line to be perfect from one end to the other, especially when you're double cutting, you could independently twist the beam from one end to the other. So, so basically you can put a level on this side of the beam and compare it to the other side of the beam. And you can get it pretty close just by uh, adjusting one end's rollers. So you're effectively twisting the beam from one end to the other. You can twist it, it will twist um, to get that adjustment.